All right, as we get ready to go on the air here at 1300 CBS Sports Radio, I'm Wayne. Of course, everybody recognizes Bruce Mason. Turn the camera for one second. There's the wave. There you go. And How got, about the producer? Well, we got Bilby's off camera. Bilby, take a step or two to the, your left. There he is, the hands of God. He makes sure. Who's on first, Bill? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Bill, make sure this whole thing rocks and rolls. Thank you, Bill. And we've got about 20 seconds to air. All right, this is our usual pregame bump. Ooh. All right. Good evening, sports fans. It is Turp Talk, and here's the big Turp himself, Bruce Posner. Yeah, welcome, in, everybody. We got, uh, in, well, former intern Mason to my left, Wayne Viner to my right. We will, you can check out TurpTalk.com tonight and actually watch this show. And what a show it is today, because it's, it's a big one, as Ed Sullivan would say. A really big show. It's a big show tonight and for Maryland up at Penn State. We actually will be on the show during the game, so you'll hear my commentary during the game as Wayne and Mason are going to shoot down to the Under Armour Center for a big football night tonight. Yeah. And uh, celebration, right? It's a celebration of recruiting day. This is the traditional Wednesday of uh, National Recruiting Day, but with the early signing period, most of those Terps have already signed. But what I want to talk about, and Mason was there for most of this, is the week of Bruce Posner at Purdue, at UMBC. You're standing with Steve Bashotti, the pictures are up on the internet. You're talking to John Tillman, you're at the Maryland basketball game, you're going to Under Armour tonight, you throw the Super Bowl in the middle of that, and you're going to Maryland's first lacrosse game coming up on Saturday. Bruce, how do you do it, and what was it like going to Purdue? It was just another normal week for me, to tell you the truth. <laughs> of course. Without lying, it was another. You forgot about my interview with Connor Kelly and Jen Giles and Kathy Reese. And, and the week before, you were on Stan's show on TV. Stan's show, but it's just a normal week. Hey, when you, when you live the Terp life, you're always busy, all right? And when you editorialize about the Ravens, you're always busy. Uh, uh, Purdue, awesome arena, loudest place I've ever been in. Next to the... Thunderdome in Ca in Calgary, right where the uh, where uh, the Baltimore Stallions, then known as No Name, lost the first Great Cup. It was, that was the loudest place I've ever heard. Wow. It was a dome and it was low to the ground and it was just was it in Vancouver? Maybe it was in Vancouver. I don't remember. But Zach was the ball boy at that time. The Saddle Dome is in Calgary. No, it wasn't the Saddle Dome then. It was probably in Vancouver. And Zach was a ball boy for the Stallions, and the Stallions lost on a last-second field goal to uh, whoever beat them. Louis Pisaglia hit a field goal, and I can't remember who it was. And you got me on that one. Right, of course I'll get you on that one. Then the next year they beat Doug Flutie, so they won out champions, and then uh, the rest is history. But uh, it was the loudest place I've ever been, Purdue. And I did find out afterwards that when Brenda prepares to go to Purdue, she turns the speakers on to a deafening roar where you can't hear yourself think. I was sitting next to Don Marcus. We could not even communicate to each other. And it was a great time. Came home and just the week went on and it was a great culmination. And I got a story to tell you about the Super Bowl. So the Super Bowl's over. I'm somewhat happy. I mean, I don't really care that much that the Eagles won. I, I was, was a root for uh, New England. And I look at my phone and I see a tweet from Matt Rambo. Did you see that? No, I didn't. Said something to affect this. This is one of the greatest days of his life. I said, yeah. wait a minute. Today, because the Eagles won, I know you're from Philly, but you won the national championship. Well, I mean, uh, he was one all... Of, one of. Yeah, he one. said, no, he, 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 he didn't say it was the one. He said it was one of. Yes. So one of the greatest games or days, I guess, in UMBC history over the past however long was they opened a new building. Mason, you love stadiums. You were there, your first building opening. What'd you make of it? Really nice stadium for UMBC. You know, I have a few comments. They, it's not completely done, but they have an empty wall and one end zone. Not a big fan of that. And the concourses are a little bit small for the 4,000 that were there. 
and everything else. Bruce, what'd you think? I thought it was an outright winner. Uh, Mesa, have you, you've been to the uh, the old rack, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, compare it to that. It's a palace right. compared to that. And the quality of the seats were great. Mason was sitting in the upper deck with his cousins and told me the sight lines were great. I think the whole thing is just an outright winner. And you got to add in the fact that it's more than just a arena. It's also going to be a concert hall, a, a convocation center, a graduation center. I think it was a, a great, you know, a great, great purchase. Do you recall how much that was? I know you had Todd on and you asked You know what? I'm confused. I'm going to have Todd on later. I thought I heard $85 million. And also then I heard, $28 million. Yeah, well, I'll find out from Todd. I'm sure he knows. I'm sure he's listening right now and he's digging it up right now. And I'm sure the dog's listening. What's the name of the dog? True Grit? True Grit. He True was Grit. great. And uh, hey, they had Gary Stein and John Feinstein doing the game. All right. If I'm you, impressed. And you got to talk to Gary after the game, and that's up on TurkTalk.com. Gary, great guy, great friend of the show. Uh, i got to ask you guys something because I read it today that DJ added a four-star to the program today. Somebody named Montgomery. Yeah, four-star cornerback from... Tampa Bay, Florida. Hillsboro High School in Tampa. Just a great ad for Maryland. You know, you always need depth at those positions. And depth at any position. The one guy that they were looking for today, and they got to commit over Scott Frost in Nebraska. So, okay. so they beat out Frost for somebody before Nebraska jumped up. By the way, Ken Montgomery Jr., a 6'1", corner 165. He is rated as the 359th best player in America and the 33rd best defensive back. Where does this put the class for Maryland? Mason? Well, the 24-7 composite has it now at 28, which is, guess, Bruce, what's, what number is that on the Big Ten East? On well, the Big Ten East, I'd say it's probably, out of the seven teams, it's probably fifth. It's fourth. All right, good guess. They slid in front of Michigan State. In front of them, you have Michigan at 20, and then Penn State and Ohio State in the top five. Let me say, Michigan State's got a lot more problems than being behind Maryland in that. Uh, yeah, they, they do, but I expected, as we talked about this, was that a week ago-ish, I thought people would be fired by now, and it looks like the, all the coaches are still there. I, I don't quite understand what's going on. There. My prediction is that for whatever reason, Izzo survives and uh, D'Antonio doesn't. That's my guess. Just from the, the quantity of problems. The quantity of problems lays on the football side. Another story for another day. Let's talk about how important this game is tonight for the Terps. Again, it's Bruce Posner with Wayne Viner, Mason Viner. We've got the crew in today. We'll have Todd on later uh, with a tremendous lacrosse preview. And uh, Mason and Wayne are heading down to Under Armour, and I'll be following uh, if I'm not too late getting out of here. And Dennis will stop in the second segment. Dennis will be in the second segment. And we always thank Coons Ford for their sponsorship of all things Maryland and Turpish. Without question. New car they got there called an Echo Sport. Yeah. I was in to take a look at it. I'm starting to get the <laughs> fever a little bit. Oh, no. It's been it's, a year. That's what the thing I left out of your week is the only thing that would have been better is if you bought a new car. I was close. Close. I didn't I know that. I was close. Uh, $85 million, Todd Carton just texted me. Uh, uh, just uh, sent me a message. Eighty-five million. Uh, so you said it's a big game. Penn State six and six in the conference, sixteen and nine overall. They're a winner of one game in a row. Maryland at five and seven, sixteen and nine. They've won one in a row. To me, if you don't win tonight, you've almost the season as far as tournament is gone. Unless you win the Big Ten, you said they could afford to lose tonight, but they have to win how many more? Uh, they're at five and seven right now. I think Mason agrees with me to have any hope. And he doesn't really agree with me too much. I think at 10 and 8 in conference, they make it. And I know everybody else say, Bruce, your pipe dreaming and this and that. They got three home wins left that should be wins. Now, there's no guarantee, but Northwestern, Michigan, and uh, Rutgers should be home wins. That leaves three road games. Uh, again, Northwestern, Penn State tonight, and Nebraska. These are three middle-of-the-road wins for Maryland, and, but they got to get two of them. They can't afford two losses. I don't think 9-9 nine and nine with their strength of schedule is going to do it. Outside of Georgetown, you know, there's not many teams whose strength of schedule is uh, comparable to Maryland's. And that's not a good thing. No, it's just the way it fell. Butler continuing to lose hasn't helped. Right. Because that was a big win. St. Bonaventure is not as good or not as strong as I thought they would be. Yeah, but they're still in the bubble. I mean, they're a good team. So, But that was a bad loss. I mean, it's that simple. It is. Uh, Nebraska, 9-4 and four in the conference. We have to go there soon. 
Are they an NCAA tournament team or not? Man? I don't know. He says bubble. I don't know how they can't bubble. Be. Right now, last four out by Lenardi. I saw Sports Illustrated had them out, and that's at nine and four in this conference and eighteen and eight overall. How did they beat anybody else? I mean, not really, but they won nine Big Ten games, and they're still out. That kind of shows where this conference is right now. There are four teams in, and all four of them are ranked. Ohio State, Purdue, Michigan State, Michigan. Well, I think there'll be a little consideration for Maryland if they go 10-8 and eight with all the injuries. I'm not positive, but that's my gut feel. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not. So the, the guy we got to guard today, and we did the first game, and that's probably why the Terps won, is Tony Carr, who... What did he do the first game, Mace? Tony Carr was 6 of 23, 3 for, for 8 from 3, 16 points. He is one of the only guys in this conference that plays similar minutes to Anthony Cowan. 34 a night. 34 at Cowan's what, 37? Cowan for the season is 36 and a half. Yeah, but does that is that just Big Ten or is that... No, that's the whole year. Well, then Big Ten, I guarantee, is more if it's conceivable. Look, last game on Sunday, uh, I thought that... Uh, once again, Cowan was great. He's been great all along. A lot of heat on him. They beat, they beat Wisconsin. Ethan Happ had an incredible day. Bruno, two for six, but he had nine rebounds. That's a big factor. And those two were huge NBA-style dunks. Yes, definitely. Uh, Sean Obie was the shocker. And, and six rebounds in that first half. He played great. He yep. actually did. Yeah, you when you say six rebounds, that's a lot for thirteen minutes. It is, and they were up against Ethan Happ for right. half of that. So he he made Happ work for it. Kevin Herter down the stretch, he goes six for twelve, but when it counted, they gave him the ball and he got to the basket and he made the shot. And I think for them to really be successful, he has to be a little stronger on the ball and decide that it is up to him, not just up to Anthony Cowan. Look, Sharon Nickens only took two shots, he hit them both for six points. Uh, that's major. And Cowan, who was playing with, uh, seemed like a sprained thumb or something to that effect, was still 8 for 14, played great as usual. Mm -hmm. And guess how many minutes he had? Oh, 40. 39. Oh. I don't remember when he went out. Must have gone out at the very end of the game. Um, so is a, you have a Checo sighting tonight? I heard he is out, Bruce. Yes, he. from what I understand, he's out tonight. We might see him with a couple games left, Mason. And that would pose a problem as Penn State is one of their top guys. Is Mike Watkins that averages 13 points a game and 9.9 .9 rebounds. He got in a little bit of foul trouble last time we played him. And they also have Reeves. I mean, they have a good core. It's Pat Chambers coaching there. I, I like the job he's doing. As much of it as I don't exactly like Penn State, I still appreciate what they're doing. Because they're certainly not a basketball school, but right now, 6-6 six and six in the conference, they have a, if they do what you said Maryland should do, which is win a side of a portion of the rest of these games, they're a threat to go to the NCAA tournament as well. Well, they got a road game win against Ohio State Yeah. on a half-court three well, at the buzzer. They are 16-9 and nine right now, 6-6 six and six in the conference. Similar in a lot of ways, except they got that one win, which could be the difference. Yeah, well, if you put them up against each other... That's another reason why Maryland has the night, because this could be the battle between the fifth or sixth team. If we're going to say Nebraska's got a better chance, which I don't know to be true, or Northwestern's in that mix, they're going to look at who did what against whom, and Maryland's two wins over Penn State would knock them out. Yeah, it, this is, like I said, this becomes a very super important game. You almost have to win this one. Wait, I'll ask you a question. It's a little befuddling to me. Why don't any, why doesn't anybody go watch basketball at Penn State? I have no clue. It's just not the, the same I mean, people ask why does anybody go watch football at Maryland? Yeah, but it's not as drastic. I mean, Penn State draws a hundred thousand for football. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, and they draw a lot for wrestling, and, and they, they do a decent draw for hockey, but and, not for basketball. Hey, they sell out basketball. I mean, volleyball. So I mean, I don't understand. I don't know. It's not like they're a horrible team. You know? No, right now they're not. They haven't been very good, but they're not horrible. I would expect more people to make those trips to Happy Valley, but maybe it's it's a lot of the people who go to those games drive a long way. If you look at the actual population within an hour of Happy Valley, it's not that great. It's, so are you going to travel on a Wednesday night in bad weather to go to a basketball game? At 6.30 to boot. Probably not. No. Well, you know. But I do want to talk. I know it's... Uh, Getting late in the clock here already. I want to talk about some of these football recruits. 
Go ahead. Because we're going to a recruiting celebration, and usually every other year we'd be waiting till tonight to find out who's signed, but we already know. And Maryland has several four stars. I know Mason's acquainted with some of them. One of the biggest things Maryland had to do was get some big beef in the front lines. They get Jalen Duncan from St. Francis in Baltimore, and he's a four star. 6'6", 300, offensive side. They have Austin Fontaine, and he's one of the guys who committed early. Defensive tackle from DeMatha. And then you get your other four stars, Daryl Jones, a wide receiver, and Ken Montgomery, a cornerback. You got quality four-star depth. Most of the recruits are three-star. Byron Cowart comes in. Mason, what's the story on Byron Cowart? I know he was the number two player in America. Yeah, when he committed to Auburn, he was the number two player in America. It didn't work out. He got on the field little to never. He kind of missed home, was the word on it. Did, wasn't getting along with the coaches. Goes to junior college, and, well, then he pops up out of nowhere, and he commits to Maryland, and it was a big deal. And you know, if they can get what they can, what at one point people thought they can get out of him, it would be monumental for Maryland's defensive line, which struggled. Yeah, but isn't he the gentleman who wants to be a rush end and he's really a tackle? Of course, he'll play wherever he wants in Maryland. But wasn't he saddled as being a tackle and he was upset about it? Well, he wants to be a wide side defensive end, okay. which would be a weak side guy. And usually that's a position uh, that Maryland's had a stand-up linebacker in there. Uh, Yannick Ngakwe played that position a bit for Maryland. Uh, Maryland might envision him as an anchor end, which is the other side, strong side with the tight end. But hey, if the guy can get out there, you've seen it in the NFL, guys moving inside because their speed beats the guards and their size overwhelms the center and they can beat a double team. You look at Cowart, properly motivated, and he gets fired up. I could see him beating some guards and centers and giving pressure from anywhere you put him on the field. But if you count him as a five-star, which is where he came in, that's five guys that are four-star, five-star, everybody else a three-star. It's the second class of this quality, third pretty good class overall. Now when you look at Maryland, there's 60 kids on there that are four-star, three-star, and you start to get some actual depth. Well, when you look at Maryland's defensive line setup, I wouldn't be surprised if he sees time at the anchor, the stand-up lineman, and inside. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets time at all three of them. And with Jesse Antibottom coming back after that ankle injury, only played the one game against Texas, only played half of that game. If you have Cowart and Antibottom, you actually have a pass rusher. That's something that Maryland hasn't done consistently for a while. As usual, I'm overly fired up about football. Well, I'm glad to hear it, but I will say one thing. Both of you, you need a, I'll give you a homework assignment. And for everybody who listens out there, this is crucial for you to watch because it was the most fascinating 30-30 show I ever saw. And that was the show with Belichick and Parcells. Have either of you watched that? Not yet. I'm telling you, for a football fan, it is riveting beyond the point of riveting to see the genius of Parcells and Belichick at the same table. Now Belichick is doing to uh, Josh Daniels, Josh McDaniel, what uh, Parcells did to him. He's staying with Belichick. You know, Belichick's 65 and probably been promised a head coaching job. Huh? But the whole episode of how they broke up and how they got into a fight and their coaching acumen is just beyond conception. And when you watch him and you think about some other coaches that I won't mention, you say there's a, 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 a Lord-given advantage to Coach Belichick. And uh, why did I get to that? Because I watched it the other night. In fact, I watched it after the Super Bowl, and it was just amazing. Did you have, before we go to break, did you have a Super Bowl story you wanted to get in? A Super Bowl story? Yeah, you said something happened to you watching the Super Bowl. Do uh, you recall what that was? No, I don't. I said I had something? I thought you did, but maybe we didn't. I picked New England. Oh, you picked New England. Mason, who'd you pick? New England. Yeah, yeah but I picked I picked the Eagles to cover. I was very clear about that. I, I never thought that. Uh, uh, I'm picking them to cover. Well, he picked, what he else did. matters? I mean, you know. He did. I picked them to cover. I yeah, said man. five points was too much. It was never in doubt. And to be honest with you, I, did you really care who won the game? Yes. I did. Well, I did. Okay. I could care less. Maryland win tonight, then we'll get out of here. Do I think Maryland wins tonight? Yes. I'm stepping out on the limb. I can't imagine them being continually as unlucky down the wire. I asked Turgeon a question the other day 
that you haven't got up yet, but if they win the day because they do it, I want you to get it up. I, I know you think I'm crazy. I look to see Maryland press down the wire today. I look to wow. see them put a little pressure on uh, just to mix mix things up again. Turgeon said no shot. But I just had that feel, and I, I, I've got to read on him sometimes. All right, with that, guys, go down there, do your homework. Uh, check out the Under Armour. Let me know if it's still time for me to come down. That will wrap up this segment. Thanks a lot for coming in, both of you. And we will be back in a few minutes here on CBS Sports Radio 1300.